What is going on YouTube? Lex Express checking in with a Blu-ray review for Taken 2. Now as you guys see, uh, I just got done watching the movie right now. I got done watching the alternate cut and the unrated cut of the film. Uh, sorry if you guys think the lighting is bad, but whatever. What's important is what I have to say. Um, this movie includes the unrated cut and the theatrical cut. The theatrical cut is the one that, you know, obviously went to theaters. Uh, that movie runs for about an hour and 24 minutes exactly. And then uh, the unrated cut runs for six minutes longer. So it's, so it's about an hour 30, hour 31 between that range. Um, and then the alternate ending, it's a, a separate clip in the special features section that's 25 minutes long. Now this is not going to have any spoilers. I'm just going to review it, talk about it, and you know basically point out some things that I like and didn't like. So, first off, I did not see the theatrical cut. I just went right into the unrated because I'm sure the unrated has more blood and uh, maybe just a bit more action. I was trying to read online the difference between uh, both of them. But apparently nobody has done a full review for each, uh, each film, each cut of the film or whatnot. So, let's start off with the unrated. I, like I said, I got done watching the movie right now. Uh, with both of my parents and they were super more than satisfied with the film. I thought it was great Everyone hated this film ranked on it despised it for whatever reason and to be honest I thought this movie was fantastic. I thought it was great. I love the first one so much I thought it's you know, it's one of my top ten favorite films of all time uh, the original taken it's just a fantastic film that you know I always wanted to see if they could do a sequel and once I heard about the sequel and the premises, yes, I know it sounds like crap and, it, you know, it sounds like a load of bullshit. Uncensoring this. I'm not going to edit that out because I'm trying to be completely honest with you guys of what I thought of the film. Um, once I started watching this movie, I was just skeptical. You know, I was just looking at every little detail, every, you know, thing I could find. I would try to criticize it and I just couldn't find enough to dislike the movie. You know, yeah, there is a driving scene that they show in the, in the commercial that, uh, you know, Liam, Neeson, uh, Liam Neeson's daughter in the movie, Maggie Grace, uh, she's driving the, the Mercedes car, which is a taxi cab. They actually show her, uh, you know, bumping and crashing a couple times throughout the film like they show in the trailer. And, you, could, you know, you actually know that she's inexperienced, but for an inexperienced driver, she actually did a hell of a job. And that could actually be a, the negative part of the film, at least for me, because it's kind of unrealistic as someone who just learned how to drive or just, you know, basically got their hands on a wheel can do what she did. But, you know, considering it is Hollywood, it's a, it's a, I was about to say something, a curse or whatever, but considering it's a film, it's something to entertain yourself. You gotta, you know, basically forget about that during that scene, I guess. And then um, I was talking to one of my friends that he didn't like that she's running on the roof. Now, if you look closely when she's running on the roof, there is a sidewalk on the top of the roof. I don't know why they have that in that uh, Istanbul or whatever, but there is a sidewalk on top of the roof. So it's believable. It's not fake. And then the part of her driving, I like that they show Liam Neeson doing the gear shifting for her. If you guys take a close look and pause it. I'm not going to show it because I don't want to, you know, deal with copyright issues or whatnot. But they do show Liam Neeson doing the gear shifting for her. She's the one hitting the pedal to basically ease the shift, the transition. So it makes it realistic. You know, they're still trying to keep it realistic according to the premises of Taken. Now, that's what bothered me, basically. Just, you know, basically the car scene that, you know, inexperienced driver pulling off some crazy shit. But... Aside from that, the movie still has the things I love from Taken 1. One of them is the suspense. You don't know if the wife is going to die. Obviously, you hope that Liam Neeson's character doesn't die. And you, you expect for him not to die. But you really don't know if he's going to suffer a great loss. So, there's times throughout the film that either his daughter or the his ex-wife can get killed. He can get killed. So, it's all up in the air. The only person that you that you could imagine that's not going to die is Liam Neeson. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to spoil nothing else. A lot of people did bash it. And a lot of people are probably going to bash me for loving this film. But I can't help it. 
And I, for a second, I'm like, you know, do I love this film because it's Liam Neeson? It's it's not just because it's Liam Neeson. The plot was actually pretty entertaining to watch and to basically reveal itself. And it's a simple plot, may I add. You know, just it's the people who's uh, the father of the people who died or whatever in part one is seeking revenge. And they find out uh, who Liam Neeson is and they try to track him down and they do a good job in doing that. That's all I'm going to say, okay? With that being said, Taken 2, yes, it's kind of unrealistic, but let's be real. Taken 1 was unrealistic. So this movie does not push any buttons as far as unrealistic shit, because this is just as unrealistic as Taken 1 was, and Taken 1 is a great film. I'm not going to say that this is the greatest film or my top 10 favorite of all times like Taken 1, simply because... I, you know, I would like to consider it more as a series. As a series itself, I'll have both of them on my top 10. I love it. I love Taken 2. It was great. So with that being said, the Blu-ray review, the picture quality was amazing. The, the composer in this film, I forgot his name already, but he did a great job with the score. Amazing sound. The 5.1 DTS is ridiculous. I can't pl uh, praise this movie enough. You guys have to go out and buy it for $19.99. It's definitely a steal. They say it's the edge of your seat thriller of the year. And it was damn a damn good thriller. Real fun ride. I couldn't, ex you know, I couldn't, how do I explain that? I couldn't ask for more. I couldn't ask for more from Taken 2. I thought it was fantastic. I love the slipcover. I love the acting. I love the cast. Real good movie. Two thumbs up. So go out and get a YouTube. I'm sorry if you guys don't like my review because I didn't spoil anything. I'm sorry if you guys are mad that I love the film, but I can't help my feelings. I just liked it a lot. That's it. Now, uh, how do I say this? The alternate uh, cut that's in the special features, just watch maybe like the first 10 to 15 minutes after you're done watching the film because uh, the last like 15 the last half of the alternate cut, it's the same thing from that's in the movie. So all you really need to see is the beginning of the alternate cut. It really changes up uh, Liam Neeson's motivation to go after the people. So that's all I'm going to say. Uh, check this movie out. Really good film, in my opinion. I hope you guys like it. If you guys don't like it as much as I do, then I'm sorry. But it is an enjoyable film at best. If you don't want to buy it, just rent it. It doesn't hurt nobody or download it. Lex Express checking in, checking out with another Blu-ray review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sorry for talking so much. That's all I got to say about uh, taking, guys. Peace.